Hey everyone, I'm Azzy. And I'm Mouse. Welcome to this week's edition of Obscure Undead Weekly Update, your weekly roundup of band, tour, music, and anything else that we find interesting news. Uh, we also give away one album every single week. Stick around to the end and we'll tell you how you can enter. We are giving away a digital copy of Twin Tribe's debut album, Shadows. This week we have music videos to review by Son Sombra, Pleasure Symbols, Cold Showers, Kaylin Mikla, and a teaser video by A Starry Night. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first video we're going to be looking at is Sun Sombre's recent single release, The Future is Black. So this is off of their upcoming album on Post Gothic Records called The Veils of Ending. It releases June 1st. And what did we think of the video? Well, um, the video is pink. It's pink. <laughs> Even though the future is black. So uh, the first thing we noticed is uh, you've got the band and they're jamming out and uh, the, the visuals are superimposed by... Uh, the old Nosferatu movie from the 20s. Yeah, so um, that was fun uh, for the most part. We spent way too long rewinding and watching the video trying to figure out why there were two guitars, why the singer Brandon had a guitar and why he also had another guitar up on stage. We decided that it was because sometimes that other guitar is playing lead guitar when Brandon is singing, and when Brandon is playing, he's playing rhythm guitar. And then there was a bass. And there was a bass. Oh, and there's a, uh, a young girl in the back who we thought might be playing keyboards, but really she's just dancing around in a Sun Sombra shirt. Uh, so uh, she was kind of entertaining. Uh, the video was super, like, like super band cheesy, and I really loved it for that. <clears throat> Plus this song. It's really great. The song I would is jam great. to this song. Like, this, yeah. this song is awesome. And I, I'm actually looking forward to reviewing the album when it comes out. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, Super second wave. I mean, it's on post gothic, and they definitely have a sound that they target for with their bands. And um, this this track was really awesome. You cannot listen to it on Bandcamp. You have to listen to it on YouTube right now. So we'll provide the YouTube link down below. Okay. So the pleasure symbols video. Uh, their new song is called Image Reflected, and uh, it came out in March March fourteenth. Yeah. Um, this is a new sound for Pleasure Symbols. If you're familiar with the band, um, they have a kind of uh, minimal wave sound. And uh, last we checked, there were two girls in the band and now we only see one. So um, not really sure what that means just yet, but their music video is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I think it gave off like that dream pop, um, ethereal kind of vibe. Um, going back to like an like an eighties, um, an eighties alternative look, uh, multiple colors, uh, double images. Well, the video was really minimal. It kind of had a three D look because it was this red color with the uh, blue color. It was very muted, and a lot of the images were superimposed on each other. So it had like a three D coming apart sort of avant garde uh, on a black background kind of look. It was really cool. And I love that double image kind of look uh, that it's just like a, a perfect aesthetic for um, this kind of wave music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got roses and um, ice crystals and, and a lot of really great imagery. And that is off their debut full length album that is coming out on May 24th on Avant Records called Closer and Closer Apart. Yep, and I can't wait for their new sound. Mm -hmm. So check out the link down below in the description. Okay, so <laughs> it's so awkward. That's the way the video makes us feel inside all the time. Um, so the video we're talking about is, of course, Cold Shower's recent release, Shine. Um, and it really looked like an 80s, you know, rom-com. Uh, we kept expecting Patrick <laughs> Swayze to show up at any minute. Oh, the, um, the flash dance girl. Who's the one she runs really, really fast? And she's got the, um, the stockings. You know this is your favorite movie. We're talking to our director. He knows this is his favorite movie. Okay, so, so there's, there's a number of 80s music videos with, uh, 
dancing in it and leotards um, that go under your your heel. No, I wish the video was more like that. But at the beginning, you know, she's driving over the um, Golden Gate Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, like the opening to Full House, and then <laughs> then she yeah. gets into a dark room and starts dancing, and um, it's so so eighties. It's and, very um, 80s. It just took us back. So uh, the the video was not what we were expecting for the song. The song was beautiful. The song was great. You know, of course, cold showers. It reminds me of David Bowie. Maybe everybody doesn't feel the same. I think it. No, I think it's, it hits David Bowie for me too. Uh, okay, okay. But but when you're listening to a smooth, sultry voice and um, you're, you're watching this woman drive through San Francisco, <laughs> then dancing in a dark room. That's all she wanted to do. That's why she drove over the bridge was so course. she could go dance. The freedom. Oh my God. Okay. I'm okay. Next. <laughs> well, not next. So just to give you a little bit of information, <laughs> this uh, uh, Cold Showers has an album coming out on Deus Records on May 24th called Motionless. There is a bonus cover of Sandy Rogers 80, 80s ballad, Black Sidewalk. If you buy the LP or CD, you can't get it through the digital version. Um, so if you mosey on over to Deus Records, and oh, we should have made the Yeehaw Goth comment for Sun Sombre, but that's okay. So if you mosey on over to Deus Records, they have a tricolor vinyl available that's really pretty because they have these like super arty album covers. Um, I don't know if they're abstract, I don't know art. Cold showers, yeah, yeah, it's abstract art or, yeah. or uh, painted by and... a seven year old. Oh, that's me. I love Oh, sorry. Art. Okay. No, it's abstract art. Thank you. Um, but it, they have a tricolor vinyl in red, blue, and green that's pretty cool looking. And uh, that was only in a run of 200 copies, so I'm really surprised it hasn't sold out by now. All right. Well, we'll go link to both of those things in the comments down below. Prepare for the next uh, music video. Next. All right. And the last music video that we have to talk to you about is Kaylin Mikla's recent music video that they just released in the last couple of days for Not FDR Not, which is off of um, their recent album from November 9th of last year. With the same under, name. Uh, with the same name, Not FDR Not, Night After Night in Icelandic. And this video has some really Blair Witch Project vibes to it. It's basically a camera in the woods at night. Black and white. And then you start seeing all this really cool witchy imagery. Um, it, it reminded me of the movie The Witch as well. Um, super creepy, very surreal. And then once you see the girls in their um, their white, um, like Puritan dresses, it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of background information on this album is the women of Kayla Mikla were very strongly inspired by the uh, witch hunts and trials and drowning of a bunch of witches um, in Iceland. I think about 200 years ago or so, something like that. Um, so the costuming kind of matches that a little bit. Um, and we definitely think that this video is about the drowning of the witches because there's one of the women from the band pops up out of a puddle. Just a random puddle thing on the ground. And you can, you can find the lyrics to the song on their Bandcamp page. If you were to go to their album, uh, there's lyrics next to each song. So we just opened it up and looked at it. And it does seem like the song is talking about the actual drowning and, and, and how you would feel as a victim drowning. But then you look at the video and it kind of reflects more on uh, victims trapped in um, bound to earth, maybe trapped in the wilderness mm -hmm. with their with a with a creepy man with a knife who we assume to be their murderer or judge or executioner, witch and hunter, jury, all of them. Yeah. But it was a creepy video. And I mean, it really went well with uh, the you know, sort of creepy atmosphere that this entire album has. So. I look forward to more videos if Kayla Mikkel puts them out. This one was really, really well done. All right, and that is it for the music videos, but we will now be showing right here, right now, a clip of A Starry Night's teaser for their upcoming music video slash single, um, As If You Were Dead, which they will be premiering out on May 24th. And um, the clip is really short, so we will play it here. All right, wasn't that great? 
It was way too short. It's like 12 seconds. So it got me all excited because Michael from A Starry Night starts singing. And then the clip and then is he's over. done. <laughs> but you get to hear some really amazing guitars that sound very The Cure playing song. Sound, yes, exactly. Yeah. Sound song is, is, is the first thing that came to mind. And I would love to hear more of Michael's vocals off of this song, which we have to wait a couple of weeks for, fine. Because I can't decide if he is channeling David Bowie or Robert Smith. Uh, a little bit of both and also some uh, She Wants Revenge. It's just his own little ball of yeah, sadness. We're, we're basing that off of like five words. So we don't have much to say about it. But um, it's, a, it's a cool clip. Um, thank you, Michael, for sending it to us. You, Michael, and uh, when we us. get the full video, we'll let you guys know about more. Mm -hmm. And that wraps it up for the music video portion. Now into the news. The first piece of news is actually a little bit of a sad piece of news. So the long-running uh, Brazil-based music uh, zine, the blog that celebrates itself, has shut down. They decided to, after a decade and a couple of months, uh, stop putting out any content. And they put out a public statement saying that they were sort of shuttering their doors. And this is really significant because the blog that celebrates itself was a really excellent source for music news. They covered all kinds of tiny bands. They said that their mission was to spread to the world the music that really deserved attention. And they did this. They did over, they did 3,000 reviews, or not reviews, interviews. interviews, excuse me. And over their decade long run, that's almost one interview every single day. That is huge. And they covered bands from genres like post punk, dark pop, indie goth, um, shoegaze, and I found a lot of music through them over the years. I mean, granted, they wrote in Spanish a lot of the time, and I would have to turn on Google Translate, but that that blog really did, with a lot of love, sort of bring light to some really, really, really cool underground bands. And on their sister label, the blog that celebrates itself, Records, so Record Label, they put out a ton of compilations. Um, I think some 100, almost 200 or so compilations, but with the closing their doors, they did put out one final compilation and it is a tribute to The Cure. It is all 12 tracks of Disintegration covered by 12 different bands. The first one is Plain Song. It's covered by Dark Swoon. And there are a couple of other bands that I remember on the list that I knew, but most of them I hadn't heard of and they really did justice to The Cure's Disintegration. And if you hadn't you know, known, this is the anniversary of Disintegration, so... We're all really excited. We're all really excited and at the same time really sad. Um, it really is a shame that they that they shut down. And um, But they said that there are new projects on the horizon, so... You know, maybe this is the start of another equally as amazing thing. Did you have any news this week, Mouse? I do, I have one little piece of news. Um, Nitsereb is coming to the U.S. Um, just to give an update, there has been some uh, visa delays, which mean that uh, David Gaudet and Simon Granger um, of Nitsereb won't be able to join um, the first part of the North American tour. But worry not, uh, Bon Harris and uh, Douglas McCarthy will be um, part of the entire North American tour. And they, of course, uh, make up the, uh, the star power of Nitsereb. So they're the ones that normally put on the show, so you won't be missing um, a thing. So uh, make sure to support those shows if you see them come around town. Are um, they coming to Tampa? They are uh, coming to Tampa on May 20th. So that is, oh, that is just around the that corner. just around the corner. And I will be there dancing my butt off in uh, Speedo shorts. So make sure to come Speedo out. Speedo shorts. I got I to gotta match everybody else, you know? See, that's the real news this week. There are a couple of things coming out in the next week that we're looking forward to. Uh, the first thing is on May 13th, Je Thème's self-titled album, Je Thème. This is a post-punk synthwave vibe sort of release. There is also on the 13th, Min We Machine's Infra Rouge. Infra Rouge. Rouge. Not what we said last time. Yeah, don't believe us ever. Don't listen to us. No. Um, and that is a solid dark wave release. We're excited for it. Uh, go watch their single music video, Dergs. Drugs. 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 Mm. 
Um, what else is coming up in the next week? Oh, uh, the new Rosetta Stone mm. uh, called Seems Like Forever. And it really has been forever. That's coming out years is pretty much forever. on May 15th. And we may actually do an extended review on that and compare the new work to uh, some of the older Rosetta Stone albums and Misery Lab releases. So that'll be fun. Yeah, and that'll be a separate episode so we don't run into like an hour or four hours. So stay tuned for that. We we'll- can't make a four-hour documentary. <laughs> On Rosetta Stone? We cannot make a four-hour documentary. I put it on, on HBO. Stone. <laughs> Ooh, actually, let's contact HBO. We should. HBO, <laughs> give us a show. <laughs> All right, and we also have Second Still, um, long-awaited album uh, coming out on May 17th, and it's going to be called Violet Phase, and that's just straight-up post-punk. I don't know what to expect. It's a little bit more experimental than their last albums, and Suki San seems to be doing something a little bit different with her vocals. So I'm hesitantly optimistic, uh, simply because uh, Trust Ruins really broke my trust oh. from All Your Sisters. Uh, so we'll see. But I'm still really, really looking forward to it. I love Second Still. Speaking of um, Trust Ruins by All Your Sisters, I think I might want to go back and re-review that uh, personally, because I know this is totally up to- off topic, but um, I went and gave it another listen, and I have a completely different viewpoint now. So... Is it an industrial viewpoint? It's an industrial viewpoint. Mm. So listening from um, a fan of industrial and cold wave instead of um, post-punk dark wave. Yeah, that'll definitely change your opinion. That certainly changed our opinion on how we looked at Soap Returnus last week. Yeah. All right, so that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, We are reviewing four albums this week. We are reviewing the latest release from Auto Melody, La Venire, Zeno and Oaklander, and Virgin and Vale. All right, let's get to it. So let's get started with Auto Melody, their album. Um, your... mm-hmm. Okay, I'll try one more time. Please, thank you. It's called Mirages à Futur Verbrisse. But Verbrisse. We're Americans, so that's as good as you're going to get. Yeah, and it is French. French. Or French, French. Mirages of Future Verbal Years. Oh. Nice. I think that's I think that's what uh, Google Translate said. Um, and we have a theme with all the reviews that we're doing this week. They all have a French connection. Yes. Coincidentally. So this entire album is in French, um, but they're based out of Montreal. Mm-hmm. The uh, singer Xavier Paradis is from Quebec. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this is uh, one of the first like absolutely like minimal wave albums that we've reviewed i think on this show maybe i think it might be all right so uh expect a sound that's kind of um synth heavy um cold wave sounding so you have your um your wave elements and your atmosphere but you also have um there's no guitars so uh, don't look for that you'll have uh, well there is guitars you have dylan steel on guitar Huh? Yeah. All right. Well, what do I know? I've listened to the album like 12 times and I don't notice a guitar, but that's what's great about music like this. And uh, I I noticed that with a couple of the other bands we're about to review as well. Some of the instruments are balanced so well, you can barely hear them. I just hear synths. Is that the thing balanced if you can't hear an instrument? I think it's, that means it's all like mastered at the same level. It's not like one is raised above the other. They're all working in unison as like one instrument. Okay. I hope that's what's happening. <laughs> um, well, I uh, I didn't think that this album was minimal wave. I thought that it had some some elements of so sometimes it was new wave, sometimes it was cold wave, sometimes it was minimal minimal wave, sometimes it was vapor wave. I would even say it was all of those things. It was very wavy and it hit upon a lot of different a lot of different sounds. Um, which sometimes that was really great. There were some tracks I really enjoyed. And there were some tracks that I thought were just so busy and noisy and just, I don't want to say hate, but yeah, I don't want to listen to it again. So like Art, uh, what is it? Art, um, Art Contraire. Art Contraire. Track 7. Did not like it. Mm. Okay. Busy. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Toujours de Hamai or Tom. Uh, track 5. Uh, so that one has a very heavy um, synth pop vibe to it. I definitely could see it on a dance floor. 
um, along with Le Poussière, which is the first track. Um, that was the first uh, single that was available when the album was on pre-order, and absolutely love that song. So, um, you know, you've got Xavier's uh, melty vocals oh, flowing so throughout crude. it. Oh, I love it's it. So crude. So mm. definitely, um, definitely want to check out those two tracks. Um, track one and track five are my favorites. Did you have a favorite? I had two favorites. I liked For Rouge, Chateau Brilliance, and Dernier Dalmat. Oh, okay. And uh, one other thing I want to mention. Did, did track did you um, okay, so sorry. Uh, Faux Rouge, Chateau Brilliance is track three. <laughs> and uh, Dernier Doubt is track eight. Um, I wanted to mention um, track two, which is uh, Les Metros de Sparus. There is a music video available for that. And um, you'll notice that he paired up with um, Liz Winnebago. <laughs> Liz Winnebago. Wendelbo. Wendelbo from uh, Zeno and Oaklander. And uh, we're going to be talking about her album. But you can find her on the music video as well. And uh, that was just really cool to see that pairing in there. Yeah, totally coincidental. Um, but I don't know, this album really ran the full gamut of sense. Uh, it's not something that I usually would have gone for, but I still found two tracks in there that I really liked. Uh, overall, I'm not a big fan of synth pop or um, super electronic music, but um, yeah, this is something I'm writing. Keep me interested. The percussion was pretty cool too. The electric percussion? Yeah. Not real drums. No. All synthesized drums. Yeah. It was, it was interesting, it was very like party atmosphere. So. All right, so check out the album on Bandcamp and look in the description for the links below. All right, so launching into the next is uh, La Vigneur. Uh This has the French connection in that it is, in French, the, it is the solo project of Jason Sloan, who is from Baltimore. Maryland. I don't know if he's from Baltimore proper, but he's from Maryland. He is a uh, veteran electronic musician and sound artist, according to his bio, but one thing that we found out that was really cool about him is he is a professor teaching full-time in the interactive arts department, and he founded the sound art program at the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore. That would be awesome if my teacher had a cool synth wave project. Yeah. Well, not actually synth wave, it's just it's synth just and wave, which are two different things. Synth and wave. Yeah. Um, so that would be really cool to find out. Uh, you know, usually people who can't do teach, um, but this guy can do it all. Do it all. So the single is called Les Oubliés, or maybe there's not an S in there. Les, Les Oubliés. Les Oubliés. Yeah, pardon our French. Uh, there are four tracks on it. <laughs> uh, there are four tracks on it. Um, the standout track definitely has to be um, that first track called Requiem. Um, this version has the Requiem radio edit and the three uh, extra tracks are B-sides. They will not be on the upcoming album. That upcoming album is also going to be called Requiem and it's going to come out sometime. Sometime. In the future. I don't know. I thought that um, sometimes the album had a little bit of a synthwave, new retro wave feel like ever so slightly. I think I put that on hard parts. Uh, yeah, I kind of felt that too, um, but not synthwave. Retrowave definitely, so it has like that um, that old uh, late '80s new wave feel to it. Um, but mostly only in the first track do you hear like an actual like dance kind of melody. Mm -hmm. I felt like the other tracks were um, atmospheric and. Um, I really love yeah. that reflection. That's my favorite track off the whole. Oh, the last track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm really sad to hear that that's not going to show up on the album. That one's very pretty. Nope, it's a B side, so you got to get it on this. God damn. It's a great song. Um, I was thinking that that song would go perfect for like a dreamy night. I would love to spend that song. Um, I would just really like to hear more from from uh, Love and Year to just sort of in general. And we don't know when Reflection or Requiem is coming out. Uh, nope, it just says uh, from the forthcoming album and tracks two through four are exclusive to this release. Mm. Well, you'll hear about it here when we know when it's, uh, when it's to be released. But honestly, this was way too short. I would love to have more from, from them. Um, their back catalog doesn't satisfy like this, this album did, in my opinion. EP, this EP, really short, excuse me, EP. Yeah. Okay, so sorry our opinions are really short on this one. 
Well, um, it's only four tracks, so. <laughs> Uh, I know that Mouse is going to have a lot to say about our next band, Zeno and Oaklander. <laughs> oh. Um, I, I don't have a lot to say about this album. It is not something, it's not for me. Um, it was a little bit too pop, a little bit too synth. I loved it. So, yeah. um, can I say this is minimal wave? So, uh, you, you're going to have to excuse us on our genres because, as you know, um, genres overlap, they redefine themselves. Um, some bands start out in one genre and then over the years they end up in something else. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of use generalized terms here. I've always called them a minimal synth project, but then we have a minimal synth expert over the corner who might think differently. Oh, they he are? Says, he says they are. Okay, okay. Synth. So they have the minimal synth seal of approval by <laughs> our, our, uh, our expert off screen over there. Uh, so Zeno and Oaklander, um, they are based in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And um, I had definitely gotten, I actually thought they were French Cold Wave. Uh, and uh, I met them at their show that they had in Atlanta. And then they came and they played right, you did that. in Orlando. Yes, I went and did that. Uh, so um, they, uh, there's some quotes here um, that we have from them about uh, their new sound. And if you, um, if you don't know their stuff, I do encourage you to go back and check out uh, their back catalog. I have gotten a 70s vibe from it. But I guess um, she says it's more 60s and 80s. Um, so. Yes, so Wendelo explains, I channel the spirits of 60s French pop chanteuse Francois Hardy and 80s new wave New York icon Tina Waymo. Okay. So, so you averaged the two. You averaged the two, yeah. So I, I mean, like, her hair just reminds me of, um, like, very 70s, um, late 70s new wave and uh, you know, the way she dresses, but I could be totally wrong. Um, then we have a quote from um, Sean McBride who uh, it works on synths. And uh, he says, um, musically, Hypnos, which is uh, their latest album, yeah, same in the album, is a return to polyphony after several years of using strictly monophonic synthesizers. I don't know what that means. I think it's the opposite of monophonic. So there's a um, an entire, vibe of minimal synth where it's mono synth. It's there is just one synth line in the song. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So you think of songs like Boy Harsher's Pain, you have one synth. Yeah, you do. That's mono synth, that's monophonic to me. So I think uh, polyphony means that they have multiple layers of synths going on. And I definitely experienced that when I saw them play live. Um, Sean McBride is um, working on like amazing bass lines that are just like blowing out the room and then every once in a while Liz would come up on um, on her instruments and um, and do the synth and by the way it's all analog there's no actual like keyboards up there they're just tweaking buttons and cords and wires and XLRs and there's a huge synth thing I guess I didn't wow. actually go up and look at it I think she had a little like a little tiny like one octave um, like synthesizer there and then she would play um, synths and then go up and sing. So it would be on a loop and she would go up and sing. That's really And he would do the rest of it. Yes. So oh. um, so that so was really, really cool. Did it sound different in, in person? Oh, it actually did. So um, if you listen to the album uh, Hypnos on Bandcamp, um, you do get like that minimal um, vibe. It's just really simple, um, but at the same time, more layered than their previous stuff. And uh, and her vocals are kind of weaved into it and very light and airy. But when you go see it live, it's mostly about like those that bass and uh, I guess it, like it just like a wall of electronics. And then you hear her vocals in there. You can see her singing, so you can tell when she's about to start. And you're like, oh, it's gonna start. It's gonna happen. And uh, it, it's just it's really exciting just to see it unfold. Um, hmm. That's really cool. Did you get that shirt at the show? I did. How long did it take you to cut it up? Two minutes. After you bought it? Well, no, no, I, I didn't cut it up until today. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just teasing. <laughs> it's my first time wearing it, so. Yeah. No, I love the way you all take your t-shirts. So, uh, if you want to listen to the album, um, we highly recommend it. Track two is called Hypnos, and uh, she's pretty much spelling the word Hypnos. Um, Insomnia is my favorite track. That's track four. There's a music video you can find for that. There was a track in towards the end of the album that I really liked. I think it was track six. Um, Altamira? Altamira. There's also Athena and um, 
I might be confusing the two, but there was one towards the end of the album that I did enjoy. The rest of it, I was just sort of like, hmm. That's why I do the synth reviews. Yeah. And speaking of that's why most of the synth reviews, we're closing out on a death rock band. Ah, in Finland. <laughs> uh, Virgin Veil. Vale. They released on April 26th their most recent album, Permanent Funeral. Uh, that was released on... Oh shoot, who did they release with? I'm totally drawing a blank. Um, that doesn't matter, we'll figure it out, we'll put a link down below. Uh, so... What's the French connection? Jacques Saff is French. Jacques, Jacques is French. The, the singer Jacques Saff is uh, French born and he lives in Finland and he is in two bands. Uh, Virgin Veil vale as the frontman, this is his project, and Masquerade, uh, which is Susie Sabotage's project. And the bands both have the same members, but who writes the songs is, is dead fronts, the band is different for both. So Susie Sabotage in Virgin and Veil vale plays the synths, uh, which I expected there to be a little bit more synths on this album. I almost didn't notice them. I had to go back and listen. Um, the synths are, um, are very light, maybe, but it, it could be like I was, I was saying before that if, if you use all the instruments, um, written in a way that they uh, they overlap or um, I don't know what I'm trying to say but like when they when they both play the same melody you often can't hear one over the other yeah that's true and that's not a bad thing mm -hmm. so um, what you do end up hearing most on this album is something that characterizes death rock and particularly virgin veil vale, and that is the wailing guitar wailing and wailing um which is great I love it and oh uh, it's just a beautiful creepy great thing and it really like brings you back to like the straight up 90s death rock. I would go even further back than that because really? they have a really Christian death vibe. Yeah, uh, especially with Jacques vocals. So absolutely Ros Williams Christian death. Yeah. Ros Williams. Ros Williams. Um but very crisp sounding. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like 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 the, muffled like you're getting through a yeah, that That's the whole difference to me with like 80s death rock. That's a good point. So so crisp, it sounds new. Um, even though it does remind you of being recorded in a basement or a cemetery, which is great. You can hear so everything. Mm -hmm. um, um, I did on this album, though, I liked the more atmospheric tracks. That that, that was really cool. Uh, was track really one mm -hmm. was um, atmospheric also. Yeah, um, that was. Into, Into the Abyss, yeah. which was track eight. I loved Into the Abyss. That was a really, really, really cool. atmospheric track. Um, they used Susie. I think it was Susie's vocals on that one, and it sounded... Fantastic. It was very, very creepy, very cemetery, very like punk horror vibe. It was, it was really great. But I um, did think that the second half of the album was more interesting than the first half. The first half of the album, with the exception of the song Serpents, was very much what we come to expect from Virgin and Veil. Vale, but I think that on the second half of the album, uh, Jacques really shows like some of his songwriting chops, and you get a lot more. Um, you know, like daring melodies and variation in his uh, vocal style, and it's it's. I really liked it. Um, I felt it was like awesome um, to hear that. it wasn't it wasn't um, divided into two parts for me. For me, it was like a climax in the middle. So serpents was the first song that I really loved. Ventriloquist, kiss, kill, darkness at noon. Mm -hmm. Those all in a row were like the perfect vibe for me. And he had described in an interview that. Um, that you had with him, if you go check the Spirit Undead, um, where he mentioned that the songs on this album were longer and a lot of them were slower paced. And I really love that pacing. I did too. Everything did else too. that's, um, there are some tracks that are like super fast mm -hmm. um, and very punk aesthetic. Um, I didn't like those as much as the longer, slower ones. Um, 78 Nightmares, that was such a good track. Totally caught me off guard. I'm not sure how I felt about that because of the offbeat. I'm not sure. I don't know how I would dance to it. I would get really <laughs> confused and probably fall down. See, I really did like that. Um, it was it was a surprise, and I I I, I don't know, like being surprised. Uh, that was really great. I also really liked. Uh, well, I still really love Darkness. I mean, the single for the album. Yes. That that's almost still my favorite track. I oh, what was the other other track that like I have it in my notes? Sorry. Um, damn. Self-destruction? That sounds like Ross Williams' Christian Dead. Yeah, Shouted yeah. vocals. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love self-destruction. I loved um, Like Vapors. I love 78 Night Night 
nightmares into the abyss. Um, so the whole last half of the album for sure. I absolutely really did love the second half of the album. I like I said, I I think that um, I think that of all the Virgin Veil Virgin and Veil releases, uh, this is my favorite. And uh, elongating the songs really did help. Um, most of the songs are still only like three and a half minutes long maximum, um, but a really good choice. Um, this will satisfy your deepest, darkest Jeff Rock desires. <laughs> I like that alliteration. So go check it out. We'll have the link down in the descriptions as usual. And uh, those are our reviews. Go by. We would like to apologize for the audio in the previous segment. Someone, someone, also her. Yeah, um, she, Mouse forgot to hit record and I forgot to be the backup to remind her to hit record. <laughs> but um, yeah, we screwed up. We screwed up. Hopefully the sound isn't too bad and you guys understand what we're saying. Um, you can always leave angry comments at us if it was that bad. Um, we haven't gotten any mean comments yet. We're waiting though. No, don't encourage them. Oh, I'm not encouraging you. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, so, as always, if you enjoyed any of the albums we listened to or reviewed, tell us about what you enjoyed. If you hated them, tell us why you hated them. We want to know both opinions. I mean, we give honest reviews, so give honest reviews back to us. So this week, we are picking a winner for Rendered Armor, the latest Ritual Howls album. And we had several people enter in the comments below. And we're going to use a random number generator to pick the winner. So can you pull up a random number generator? <laughs> Our director is rolling his eyes. Huh? <laughs> Our director is rolling his eyes. He didn't expect this. It wasn't in the script. That means we're absolutely doing it. Yes. Okay. If it pisses him off, absolutely. <laughs> oh, did you see that? We we're oh. getting schooled. Sorry if this is getting so long. Oh my God, we're we, ruining we, everything. We can't contain ourselves. Literally. Um, the winner is two. <laughs> Number two. You're the winner. <laughs> So that doesn't help anybody, but um, number two is Haster. Is it Haster? It is. So we're going to read your comment aloud. And embarrass you. And embarrass you in front of the whole class. The whole world. So the question we asked last week is, what do you like to eat or drink when you're listening to new music? And I believe it was Haster. Am I wrong? This one. Yeah, Haster. What did they say? What did, what did they like to eat or drink? Hey, oh, okay, I was just going to read the whole comment. Just read the whole comment. Hey, nice selection of LPs you reviewed this week. Totally forgot about pleasure symbols this month. Thanks for the reminder. When an album gets released I've been waiting for, I don't want to crunch over the details while eating. But if it's something special to me, I might pour me a shot of good whiskey mm. from my arsenal like this Talisker Distillers Edition I just bought. I can't rave enough about this stuff, but before I ramble on for... A half an hour about peat and different flavored textures. Let's just set that. See you next week. So, uh, favorite thing to eat while listening to music is whiskey. Great answer. Great answer. So, congratulations, Hatzer. Ha Haster. Haster. So, it may be that uh, we can't DM you either. This is a problem we ran into last week. If you could just message us on one of our, one of our social media. So, Instagram, Facebook. Whatever's the best way for you to get a hold of us, um, we'll give you the download code. Congratulations. Congratulations. And this week, we are giving away a digital copy of Twin Tribe's debut album, Shadows, which is just dark wavy goodness, and it's fantastic. And I just got the vinyl from Mouse's a birthday present. Thank you. You're welcome. Of their blood red pressing. I bought and, one for myself as well. Yeah. And I'm not going to pull it out because when I pulled it out earlier, Mouse got near it and it just sucked up all the cat hair on her body. Yeah. And I don't want to have to clean that off again. Yeah. So take my word for it. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It, it's blood red and has this really cool marbling, but that's not the point. The point is the giveaway. What's our question for this week? Um, how about let us know about one of your favorite concerts that you've experienced. Ooh, that's a good one. So tell us all about it. Uh, leave it in the comments on the YouTube for this episode, and uh, we will randomly pick 
a winner next week. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to also like the video, which we can't confirm, but we would like you to Smash do that, anyway. that like. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for like four weeks. So Speaking of which, this is our month anniversary episode. Yay! Yay! Fun I forgot month. cupcakes. Confetti. <laughs> Fireworks. Yeah, but subscribe to the channel, and that's really our only requirement. Happy one month. Happy one month. I love you, Mouse. Oh, I love you, Azzy. Yay. And cupcakes. I didn't bring cupcakes. No. Um, so, yes. What has been your favorite concert that you've ever attended? Tell us all about it. Um, and we want to run through some viewer input from the last video. Uh, Beth Rizoff said that he thinks an episode on the South American goth death rock scene would be great. We agree. We are hopefully sometime down the road uh, when we have time, uh, because we have some very knowledgeable friends who live in Orlando, which is a little bit away, and they both work full time. So when we have time, so we're, we're, in, we're in the process, and I'm babbling about it because I'm excited, but we have two amazing uh, friends who live in Orlando. Uh, they're from Puerto Rico, they speak Spanish, and they know a bunch about the South American goth and death rock scenes. One of them actually does interviews for our website, and she has interviewed uh, Lust Era from Puerto Rico and a couple of other bands. Um, I'll link those down below. I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but I'm really looking forward to doing an interview with these people. I think that they will say yes. So hopefully this video pressures them into saying yes. <laughs> uh, but no, we absolutely do want to do that. Uh, sometime down the, down the road, sooner rather than later. All right, let's say thanks to some of our patrons. You want to read through that? I can read through it. All right, so thank you to Skull Girdle. Thank you to Acid Bitter. And Cadaver Kelly. And Dave Azoaser. Mason Shiver. And Dia Siculus. Silicus. Nope, Siculus. Are you serious? She messaged me. Oh! <gasps> D, I'm gonna rip you a new one because I've been saying it wrong for like ever, forever. Yeah, I know, Mouse is a terrible friend. That can't be right, I'm sure it's Silicus. Siculus. Oh my God. All right, and uh, a new one. Beth, Beth Rizoth. So I hope Beth Rizoth is a he because that's what we've said. Yes, I believe so. Sorry for wrong. Um, it's been really great chatting with everyone in the Discord, you're all super cool people. Um, we can't compare. We love you. I know I say that all the time. Mouse, get on Discord. Talk more. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, but if you would like to have your name read on the show and you want to support our support, what we're doing, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash obscura undead. And we have all kinds of tiers with different reward levels. Um, and even if it's just a dollar, anything helps us out. And we really greatly appreciate it. So th thank you. That's it for this week. If you liked our video, smash that like. Smash it. Smash it. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And check out the companion video to this video where we include all the tracks that we talked about that we really enjoyed from the albums we reviewed from some of the music videos probably this week too. And um, yeah, you can find us on Mixcloud, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter that we never use. Um, and it's all under Obscura Undead. And of course, our website. All right, well, thanks for joining us on our month anniversary. Bye. Love you, bye. bye.